Hi, I'm Dan Cordopassi. Welcome to Model Building. In this series, I'm working on 5HO scale locomotives. I'm trying to reproduce the consist I saw on the front of a Southern Pacific freight train in Truckee, California in 1993. The train had two SP SD45Rs, a cotton belt B30-7, a Conrail SD40, and a leased EMDX GP38-2. I already completed the model of EMDX769 prior to starting this build. It's based on an HO scale Proto 2000 GP38-2 model. In the last episode, I added more detail to the long hoods of both SP SD45Rs and added cannon fans to the Conrail SD40. The SP and cotton belt engines are being built from the ground up, but the Conrail engine is one that I'd already painted in detail before starting this build. In some ways, the Conrail engine was a prototype for my current methods of building diesels. It was the first engine I lit with fiber optics, and I did a number of things to it that I still do on my newer builds. However, I also left some things out, like the fans. I originally took the engine apart so that I could bring it up to my current standards. As it stands now, the shell is mostly complete, with the cannon fan bases and fan blade assemblies installed. To keep them from getting damaged, I left the fan grills off. I won't use them until the model is ready for final assembly. The Conrail unit is the most complete of the four that remain to be built. I want to go ahead and finish it. I'll be doing that over the course of the next several episodes. By the way, if you've been following the series, I'm changing the format slightly. I'm going to be making shorter episodes and have them come out more frequently. This is a little easier on me and I think it'll help get this project moving rather than making people wait months between installments. In this episode, I want to modify the pilots on both Kato models, Conrail 6283 and SP7482, move the couplers inward on both of those models, and prepare the shell of the Conrail SD40 for lighting. On stock Kato GP35, SD40, and SD45 models, the coupler sticks out too far from the pilot. I want to move the coupler box inward so that the coupler is in a more prototypical location. My model of Conrail 6283 is based on a Kato SD40. Since my model of one of the SP SD45Rs, 7482, is based on the same Kato mechanism, I'll be working on moving the couplers inward on that model as well. To show you what I mean, I'll put a coupler together. I'll start by filing the lip off of a KD draft gear box. Then I'll assemble a box with a KD-158 whisker coupler. I'll use a couple of drops of liquid styrene cement to help keep the lid in place. I'm going to work on 7482's pilot first. Since it's undecorated gray plastic, it's a little easier to see what I'm doing. On the stock pilot, the coupler box has an extended trapezoid shape that bears no resemblance to anything I've ever seen on a real AMD diesel. Let's get rid of that. I'll start by clipping the part with some sprue cutters. Then I'll use a number 17 blade and a hobby knife to shave off excess material. I'll finish the shortened coupler box opening with a file. In order to move the draft gear box inward, I'll need to shorten the back end of it a little. I'll notch the corners with a file for a little extra insurance. Whisker couplers don't have a separate spring, so you can shorten the back of the draft gear box quite a bit without hurting anything. Now the coupler's in a more realistic location. The shortened draft gear box allows the trucks to pivot side to side, which is essential so that the model will be able to go around curves. I'll need to drill new holes for the screws to keep the couplers in place. A number 50 drill bit is recommended for tapping a 256 screw. I'll start drilling with the draft gear box in place so that I can mark the right location for the hole. To prevent any damage to the sill, I'll remove the coupler and finish drilling it with just the chassis. By the way, I found that cordless drills work better than high-speed motor tools in this situation. Once the hole is drilled, I'll cut threads using a 256 tap. When tapping threads in metal, be sure to work slowly. I reverse the tap often to help clear out any shavings. Taps can break if you put too much force on them, so take your time. If you feel the tap sticking too much, use a little light oil to help things along. There are special oils for tapping threads, but I'm just using some conductor lube here. Even though the chassis is metal, I'm always careful to make sure that any oil I use on model trains is plastic compatible. Once the tap is through, you're done. I definitely prefer screws to the plastic pins that came with some of the early Kato models. Now's a good time to test fit the couplers. 7482 now has screw mounted couplers on both ends. There's a lot more work to do on the pilot, so I'm not going to worry about the coupler height just yet on this model. Now I need to do the exact same things to 6283. The main difference is that I have to be careful because of all the detail on the pilots. I'll start by removing the trapezoid shapes from the pilots. Since this model has a plow in front, I'll skip the sprue cutters and go directly to the number 17 blade. I'm shaving little bits at a time so that I don't damage anything. 
It's tedious, but if I break something and have to fix it, that'll take even more time. By the way, it's well worth putting a fresh, sharp blade in your hobby knife for this kind of work. Changing angles and working the knife from different directions can help. Sometimes wiggling the blade is better than brute force for getting through stubborn areas. I don't want the knife to slip. It took a while, but I removed the material I needed to remove. I managed to do it with only a couple small nicks to the paint on the plow, which is probably about as good as I can hope for in a situation like this. I did all this with the knife, as I didn't see any good way to get a file in there. Once the paint is touched up, it should look fine. Of course, it would have been better if I'd done all this when I was building the model for the first time. The rear pilot is a little more accessible, so I can use the sprue cutters to get started. Then I'll go back to the knife. It took a while, but I managed to get it done without breaking anything on this end. Now I can touch up the paint. I'm using some Tester's Model Master Flat Black, which unfortunately is out of production, but any flat black paint would work. I found some small pieces of aluminum rod at a hardware store a few years ago that make great paint stirrers. I'm using a triple zero brush to put some black on the edges of the coupler openings in the pilot and to touch up the corners of the plow where I scrape the paint. Now that 6283's pilot is done, I'll turn my attention to preparing the interior of the model for lighting and sound. When I built this model the first time, I set it up with translucent lightable number boards, but I never installed any lights. I want to fix that. One of the tricks to lighting up a model effectively is to make sure that the light doesn't spill out of the places that it shouldn't. LEDs are bright. While I still have the black paint out, I'll brush some inside the cab roof. This is a precaution to help prevent light leaks. I'll brush some black paint inside the short hood too. I also brushed a little around the rear number boards, being careful not to get paint on the number boards themselves. To prevent light from leaking through the can and fan openings, I'll need to construct a barrier that will do double duty as part of the speaker enclosure. I'll start by measuring the interior width of the shell. It's about 5 and one quarter scale feet. I'm going to use some 040 sheet styrene to make my barrier. I like this thickness because it's fairly rigid, but it's still thin enough to be easy to work with. I'll measure 5 and a quarter scale feet from one edge and make a mark with my X-Acto knife. Next, I'll make a second mark in a different spot. Now I can line my straight edge up along both marks and start scoring the styrene. I like to use a plate glass cutting surface for this type of work. I got this one at a craft store. It even has markings on it to help line up cuts. After scoring the styrene with my knife a few times, I can snap it along the line. Let's check the fit. It'll go into the shell, but it's a little snug. I'll put some sandpaper on my plate glass cutting surface and run the piece that I cut over it a few times. Now it fits in easily. I'll need to cut the plastic to length. The exact measurement isn't important, but it has to be long enough to cover the dynamic brake and radiator fans. I'll mark a spot with a Sharpie. Now I can cut it. Next, I'll trim the ends to match the contours of the long hood. I'm doing this all by eye. High precision isn't really necessary here. As long as the part is close to correct, it'll work. The cannon fan bases stick down a little bit into the shell, so I can't just glue the barrier to the inside of the roof. I'll cut some 040 square styrene strip to fit around the sides in the front of the barrier. The strips will provide some clearance for the fan bases. I'll glue the strips to the barrier with some liquid styrene cement. Let's test fit the barrier inside the shell. There are a couple small pieces of brass wire sticking down through the shell, the ends of the grab irons. I could cut these, but I'm a little hesitant to damage the outside of the model, and it's difficult to get cutters into that area. I'm going to modify the barrier instead. I'll file a notch in the side so I know approximately where to cut. Then I'll use my X-Acto knife to cut away a small portion of the strip on that side. Now the barrier fits better. I'll brush some black paint on the top of the barrier, since this is the side that will show through the fan openings. The paint job doesn't have to be great here. The whole part will be in shadow, so the main thing is just to keep it from attracting attention to itself. This is some black tinted weathering powder from Bragdon. These powders have an adhesive that makes them stick to paint. After letting the paint dry overnight, I'll scrub some weathering powder into the black with a stiff bristle brush. This will help to kill any shine. Now I can put the barrier into the model. I'll secure it with some liquid styrene cement. This is the glue I use most often for binding styrene to styrene. The fans still look see-through, but you can't see down into the locomotive anymore. I'm going to stop here for now. Next time I'll build on the simple barrier that I made in this episode, which will eventually be the top of a custom speaker enclosure. I'll also start to install lighting. When modifying a model that's already painted and detailed, extra care is necessary to avoid breaking things. Nothing will say, I'm made of plastic, like a model that glows in places where it shouldn't. A little planning and black paint will help to prevent light leaks. 
Functional parts that go inside a model don't always need to be made with high precision. That doesn't mean they should be sloppy, but it's okay if they're a little rough around the edges, so long as they get the job done. I think I made some pretty good progress in this episode, and I'm happy with what I've done so far in 6283. We'll pick it up again next time, and thanks for watching.